Celebrity has、um, a lot of amazing shows.、Um, we were able to attend most of them、um, during the ten days cruise.、Uh, they have the show at the main theater and, of course, at Eden at night time. So、um, this is the most complete as I can、uh, for these shows. Some of them I had to remove because of the copyright, but、uh, hopefully you guys can catch this up and watch them and tell me what you think about them. In the semi-final, the winner of Britain's Got Talent 2020 is John Courtney. He was the first ever Golden Buzzer Act to win the show. To become an overnight success. It's showtime. Hi, everyone. Please welcome my dad, John Courtney. Well, hello. Good evening. Goodness me, we could have done the show in my cabin. <laughs> Listen, I'll do a show to four people. I'll do a show to two people if they want. I don't care how many people are here. I'll do a show when I open the fridge and the light comes on.、But、if you are a long way away, if you want to come closer, because I feel like you know, I could buy you all a round of drinks and I wouldn't even notice. So if you, if you, you're more than welcome. If you're right upstairs and you want to come down, or maybe you just want to be socially distanced. I don't know how this is working these days.、Um, but you know, it works better if people are sort of together. If you want to move, I won't pick on you if you want to come down. But it's great that you came to the show, the early show. This is wonderful. Before you've really had a time to drink, which isn't so good for my chances. But never mind.、Um, and I know we have an international audience, so I'm not assuming that anybody has even seen me before.、Um, just give me a little wave if you watched Britain's Got Talent in 2020. Oh, six, eight. Good. That's good.、Uh, how many of those people voted for me? That's less than half of the people I saw. Okay, so the rest of you've got no idea who I am, basically. That's where we're, that's where we're starting with. Cool. Well, thanks for sitting at the front. That's amazing. We have people in the front row because when you're on stage, I can't really see anything. It's mostly black out there.、Um, so listen, I'm not going to do all the BGT stuff. We're going to have a chat. I'm going to do some different stuff. I will play the song that I wrote for my audition.、Um, Um, so I, a friend of mine, <laughs> jokes are not going to get better. Just saying.、Um, a friend of mine saw my show in 2019, and he'd been on Britain's Got Talent, and he said, "John, why don't you go on Britain's Got Talent?" And I said, "I don't know what I do because I had a stand-up show with music and singing and comedy, and you've got three minutes." And he said, "Why don't you write a song about auditioning for Britain's Got Talent, and then sing that song?" When you're auditioning for Britain's Got Talent, and I said that will never work, and it really did. There was a man who had a dream that one day he would be seen by an audience that would respond because they were on board Celebrity Beyond. I didn't sing that at the audition. And in the time that one song took, David Williams could write another children's book. Alicia would smile at him. Amanda would be kind to him. Simon's teeth would be blinding him. 
But nothing now could ever spoil the dream he dreamed like Susan Boyle. Have you all heard of Susan Boyle? Yeah. <laughs> the fact is he never thought he'd ever get to be in front of millions of people doing his thing on TV. 30 years of playing in piano bars and pubs, dodging glasses when they're thrown, being thrown out of clubs. When he realizes he's older and 58 so far, he's having trouble making all the payments on his car. His children ask daddy, when you're coming home, this game is not the same when you're just daddy on the phone. So he sits at the piano and he tries to get prepared, thinking he'll write it in third person so he doesn't feel as scared. To sing about himself to a bunch of strangers in the dark, but Britain has got talent and he wants to make his mark. So why not me? That's what he said. What a wonderful world. All right. <laughs> Be honest, a lot of you are not too sure about this show, are you? I can see it in your faces. It's fine. Um, I'm going to give you a little exclusive this evening because just after I did my audition for, for the show, um, we had lots of champagne afterwards, as you can imagine, it was a big party. And, uh, and as I was leaving the theatre, I fell down the steps. And my wife caught me and she said, John, don't die. That would be a waste of the golden buzzer. Because <laughs> she loves me. And it made me laugh. And on the train on the way home, I said, that's really funny. I've waited my whole career to get a break like this on, on national television. What could go wrong? I, I, I could break my arm or I could get poorly. Or I could die. That would really ruin my career opportunities. And I'm a bit weird, but I wrote a song on the train on the way home. And after a couple of days, I've written the music. And I sent it to the producers of Prince of Town. I said, I think I've written a song that I could do in the semi-finals. And they heard the song and they said, John, we love this. I, I called it, I Must Not Die. And they said, Listen, it, it's a bit weird, it's a bit dark, but it's funny, it's original, it's not offensive, you can do it on television. You should do that song. I said, brilliant, one less thing to worry about. And then you go out and you do all the television and the press and the stuff that goes along with these things. All quite new to me. So that was in January 2020. March 23rd, the UK went into lockdown. You might have heard about it, it was in the papers. <laughs> and I got a phone call from Britain's Got Talent early April. And the producer said, John, we don't think you should do that song. I said, why not? You said you liked it. They said, we do like it, but we're now in the middle of a pandemic and you can't sing a song called I Must Not Die. I said, right. <laughs> so I wrote it in January. I wrote it before anybody had heard of COVID. He said, we know that, you know that. But if you go on telly and sing it when people are actually dying, I said, no, of course, I understand. People were suffering unimaginably all over the world. There's no way I could have done it. So I put that song in a drawer and I wrote another song for the semi-finals, which I will do for you if we have time. However, I now have a brand new original unheard song. <laughs> Want to hear it? Yeah. Please remember, this was written four months before we knew anything about Corona when that was just a beer. Honestly, this was written a very innocent time, but it is called I Must Not Die. happy song. <laughs> On the edge of my success, I don't want to make a mess of this opportunity that I have got. In these crazy circumstances, I don't want to take chances with my Britain's Got Talent semi-final spot. I can't think of any reason why for this 14th season, I could be a possible hot shot. The only problem I could see could ruin any chance for me is if I'm dead. And I've thought of this a lot. I must not die. That would be quite traumatic if I die. It could be problematic, so I'll try to remain emphatically alive. I must not die. 
My career could bounce back from an assortment of setbacks. I could maybe stub my finger or my toe. I could get a broken nail or there are many kind of ailments that would never make a difference to my show. I'm hoping that the pearly gates will want to make my visit late. Although heaven has got talent undoubtedly. But I want to live to be the big branch on my family tree. So my grandchildren can see my spot on BGT. I must not die. That would be the final curtain if I die Then I think I'm fairly certain that I'd cry Though my eyes would not be working, they'd be dry I must not die Since I was on TV, I've had advice and family With the greatest of intentions, I am sure Don't experiment with chemicals, socialize with cannibals Or catch a disease without a cure it's not on my agenda to put hands inside a blender Or drink water that is any way impure So it must be safe to say that at the end of every day There is a good chance that my life will still endure And now the bridge I'm gonna croon The bridge is the part of the song that has a different tune But bridges can be another fatality London Bridge is falling down The road bridge groans in Indiana Jones But Indy didn't die Just like James Bond you always can rely The bullets will always miss him when they fly Leaving him to wittily reply No Miss Moneypenny I don't expect to die Old school, Sean Connery I can't do Daniel Craig my wife wants to. Ah, and he does die. Ah, I'm not dead like Shakespeare's Romeo, who fussed and killed by Buffalo. Don't want to be a cameo or underneath a patio. Just want to play the piano and make it to another show. That's why. So, and I'm sure that maybe you walked in this evening and you saw the, you saw the piano and some of you may have thought, ah, oh, lovely. An evening of sophisticated classical music. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I, I do like classical music. I, I enjoy listening to it. I, I sort of play a little bit, but um, I like all the great composers, people like Debussy and Chopin and Batch. <laughs> <laughs> Just nodding. Yeah. Beethoven's my favourite. Do you like a bit of Beethoven? Yes? <laughs> what was Beethoven's favourite fruit? <laughs> Banana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw you sneak in late. I kind of wish you hadn't now, aren't you? Just, yeah, okay, it's alright. It gets better, stay with me. Um, so, um, what I've done, I've put this little medley together of a few classical pieces of music that I think you're going to recognise, even if classical music's not your thing. And each piece of music is very quick. There's about nine or ten themes that you're going to hear, and they come one after the other. The whole medley only lasts for about 40 minutes, which is quite quick for classical music. Some of you are panicking. No, we can't stay that long. There's food somewhere. There's a buffet. We haven't eaten for 30 minutes. Paid for it, we're going to eat it. Um, no, I think classical music, you know, it's not, some people think it's a bit boring, some people think it's elitist. My butler thinks it's elitist, I don't know why. Um, but not, not everybody enjoys it. Um, but I think this is going to... Okay, I'm, I'm going to share something with you. Because I want to get you in the mood. I want, you, I want you feeling a little bit passionate before I play this passionate music. So I'm going to tell you quickly a story that happened between Clara and I. Um, my, Clara was my second girlfriend. My first girlfriend was called Lorraine. She was amazing. She was much older than me. Um, I was only 18 when I fell in love for the first time. She was 35 and I was 18. But she was a wonderful classical piano player. And she ignited my passion for classical music and older women. <laughs> so I started working on cruise ships. Um, because there's lots of classical music on cruise ships. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, Lorraine and I dated for about a year and then we broke up. We had to break up because she dumped me. Um, she told me that I never listened to her. I think that's what she said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she told me I was too nosy. Can you believe that? Can you believe she said that? You're too, well, she didn't say it. I, I read it in her diary. Um, so, Lorraine and I broke up, and I met Clara, my second girlfriend, who was also a classical piano player, amazing classical pianist. And remarkably, she only had 
one eye. Her, her left eye was a glass eye, an artificial eye. And I'm not, obviously I'm not going to make jokes about that. I wouldn't make jokes about somebody's affliction. It's not fair. Um, I didn't even know that it was, a, it was a glass eye when we met. We went out on our first date. And it, it just sort of dropped out in conversation. Um, <laughs> Oh, don't boo yet, it's going to get a lot worse. I said, Clara, you're so beautiful, why are you going out with me? She said, John, I always go for the first man who catches my eye. <laughs> you see, they put me on the first night, because it can only get better. I mean, this, this cruise is going to be amazing. Um, so just before we play the classical music, let me tell you what happened between, between Clara and I. Because as I said, it's, it's quite, a, quite a passionate story. Um, one afternoon, Clara was, was bending over the freezer trying to reach something inside the freezer, uh, like a chest freezer. We call it a chest freezer in England, with the big lid that, that hinges. Uh, American friend, where are you guys from? Chest freezers? You call it a chest freezer? Well, I know you have different words in America. It's a different language. We, we call these trousers, but you say... Pants, pants are what we wear underneath trousers, underneath trousers. Um, we, we have pavements, you, you say sidewalk, we have petrol, you say gas, we, have, we say sweets, you say candy, we say negotiate, you say bomb the bastards. So we have different, different words. <laughs> Did I get away with that? All right, good. okay. So, um, yeah, so Clara was, was, she was trying to reach something right at the bottom of the freezer. And I crept up behind her, and I wrapped my arms around her waist, and she turned around, and we kissed. And she said, John, I love you. And I said, Clara, I love you too. <laughs> she ran her hands across my chest. She undid the buttons on my shirt one by one. Because that was easier than undoing them all at the same time. I undid the zip on the back of her dress. Americans, you say zipper, don't you? Because yeah. zip was too simple, you had to complicate it. Zipper! <laughs> I undid the zipper on the back of her dress. It fell to the floor. The whole dress, not just the zip. I don't mean the zip didn't fall off. It was still attached to it. You didn't think I meant the zip fell off. You wouldn't expect the zip to fall off. And you, even if you're wearing clothes cheap from like TJ Maxx or a charity shop or Goodwill, you wouldn't expect the zip to fall off the dress when you bought it. It'd be a waste of money. You probably have to buy a replacement zip to sew it on. It's very time consuming. And zips are surprisingly expensive. You've got to be quite good at sewing. So trust me, it's not worth it. Just find a dress with a zip that works. Or even better buttons. Buttons are much more reliable. If one button falls off, you just replace the one button. That's the rule of thumb. Yes, you have got thumbs, then buttons are really tricky because you need your thumb to push the button through the buttonhole with a zip, theoretically, you don't need thumbs at all, you just use two fingers to pull the zip down. So thumbs up for zips, not so much for buttons. What about Velcro? Oh, I love a bit of Velcro. Yeah, some people think it's a rip-off, but I like it. <laughs> anyway, the zipper was still attached to the dress and the whole dress fell to the floor and very soon we were standing there in front of the freezer, completely naked. <laughs> I lifted her up and I sat her on the edge of the freezer and we kissed again and this time it was more passionate. And she said, John, make love to me here and now on top of the freezer. And I thought, ooh, kinky. <laughs> so I looked her in the eye. <laughs> that was less than two minutes ago. Come on! <laughs> I don't want to shock anybody, I don't want to offend people, that's not why we're here, we're just here to have some fun. But I feel like I can tell you that we were two adults in a loving relationship, so I'm not ashamed to say that we did make love on top of the freezer. And it was a wonderful and passionate experience. And we got kicked out of the store. <laughs> it was worth it. So, as I said, my first girlfriend, <laughs> Can't believe I'm going to do this next bit. My first girlfriend was called Lorraine, and my second girlfriend was called Clara. So just before we play the classical music, I'd like to play you a beautiful song called I Can See Clara, Now Lorraine Has Gone. <laughs> Great 
Cruz. Oh, yeah! Please take your seats. This evening's performance of Stage Door is about to begin.
I've learned to slam on the brake Before I even turn the key Before I made the mistake Before I leave with the worst of me Step out, step out of the sun Tapping on the glass I'm waving through a window I try to speak But nobody can hear So I wait around For an answer to appear While I watch, watch, watching people pass Waving through a window Can anybody see Is anybody waving back at me? Do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? It's like I never make a sound. Will I ever make a sound? Hamilton is special because it taps into a form of storytelling that is familiar but uh, very, very unique in its own way. And the familiarity comes from the, the pop and hip-hop sound of it, but the, the uniqueness is the way that the story is actually being told. It's, it's, there's so many layers of, of character and of development and of progress and of legacy, and there's all these things that are layered into there. And each time you watch or listen to the cast recording, you're able to find something different. Each time we perform it, we're able to find something different. I think it's a show where both the audience and the people on stage get to learn with each other. I've been reading and writing. We need to handle our financial situation. Are we a nation of states? What's the state of our nation? We're past patiently waiting. I'm passionately smashing every expectation. Every action is an act of creation. I'm laughing in the face of capital and sorrow. For the first time, I'm thinking past tomorrow. And I am not going away by shot. I am not going away by shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not going away by shot. We don't arrive.
She watched the whole show. Um, she was congratulating everyone in the cast, um, and uh, and I I was so pleased to, to have performed, being her for her, and and she said some nice things to me, so I was really relieved. So I was like, I got the Carol slight seal of approval. So that was good. Looking down, I see
enough to eat. The glitter rubs right off the door. No way.
people stay loose, boy. Easy, buzz it, easy, does it. Turn off the juice, boy. Just leaving you a reminder to put the champagne on ice because opening night is just around the corner. And I'm scared. I could not be more stoked. Like, really scared. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty nervous. I feel so alone. It's like I'm all on my own. I just want a hug. Or someone to say, you'll be okay.
most important thing to remember about Moulin Rouge the musical is it's more than just a show, it's a state of mind. I love performing in this show because it is glitzy, it is glamorous, it is a celebration of all things theatrical with opulent sets, amazing costumes, jaw-dropping choreography and music which spans generations for everybody to enjoy, all centered around Satine, our sparkling diamond at the turn of the century in Paris. And when you leave the theater, you are leaving with the beautiful bohemian ideals of truth, beauty, freedom, and love.
and I get a standing ovation and the crowd goes wild. I just, it feels like you're flying. It's like the most out of body experience, the adrenaline rush that you feel, the love that you feel, It's that's what applause is, it's love. And when you feel that love, there's no other kind of love like that, and you always are chasing it all the time. You wanna get that applause every single night. So it gets pretty addictive, but I love the applause. What's up? 
can see this lady certainly is over here. What's your name, madam? Michaeline. Everybody say hi, Michaeline. Hi, Michaeline. Oh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous name. You know, that's the name of my fourth wife. How many wives have you had, Declan? Three. <laughs> And I've heard all about you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. A young lady was telling me that you like to get a little bit wild. Now, what have you got to say about that? <laughs> we all know what you did. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we all like to get a little bit wild down at the House of Decadence, too. But especially if it involves cocktails and you know. Oh, yes. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, your House of Decadence cocktail concierge are serving up something for everyone. Yes, beauteous beverages that tantalize, intoxicate, put hair on your chest, head, whenever you want it. And listen, nobody's driving anywhere, so drink up! Now listen, in order to keep our spirits bright this evening, every time you hear this sound, I feel good. and take a sip. And if you're feeling a little extra, I want to see you sing and dance along as well. Let's give it a go! I Yes, toast and take a sip. Oh, I can see this is a very, very experienced group. Especially this lovely young lady over here. What's your name, darling? Me. Where are you from, sweetie? Fort Lauderdale. This will all be new for you, won't you, darling? Carpets, curtains, electricity? <laughs> well, don't worry, darling. We're not going to hold that against you. No, 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 Lee. Not tonight. Because tonight, you are in the House of Heaven. Tonight, I bring you a star so supreme, a diamond so dazzling, that her beauty extends beyond, beyond, and into the stratosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Queen herself, Lady Talia. Ladies and gentlemen, well, you're looking fine tonight. I mean, check out this queen over here, all snatched up. Girl, your dress is too short. Yes, it is. And your heels are too high. Yes, they are. We're going to be hiring you by the end of the night. <laughs> Doesn't she look amazing, ladies and gentlemen? All dressed up with something to drink. That's how we do it down here at the House of Dickens. Tonight, give in to the power of fierce talent. Oh, delicious drinks. And acts of wonder as, as we, we celebrate, celebrate life and good times. I tap that. Ooh, I see. Wow! I feel good. Say it by the bell by my favorite moment of the night. Drink, Drink up. up. Oh, and if you don't have something in your hand, well, let's remedy that. Wow. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, our cocktail concierge are here all evening to keep you nice and bubbly. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the bar team! And that's not to make us move. Oh, yes, so good. Come on, my child. So good. Darling, yes, to keep you nice and tipsy. Oh, speaking of tipsy, all of this champagne is gonna take us to the next level. No, I think it already has for this succulent little snickerdoodle over here. What's your name, madam? Yours? Noreen. <laughs> all right, Noreen. Well, I see through this little sweet little innocent super mom act you got going on here. Uh huh. You're prim and proper by day, but we all know that you have this outfit. You're in your closet in, in red. red. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're all living our best lives here at the House, House of Decadence. Decadence. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that we've indulged ourselves again. again. Is everybody ready for our fabulous next act? Uh-uh, I said, are you good and ready for our fabulous next act? Well, I'd love to hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Smoldering Embers. <laughs> For all of us, when I say I feel equal parts exposed, aroused, and inadequate. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, well, it's her 
actually getting rather warm in here, and there's only one thing that could cool me down. Champagne! I feel good. Oh, the nectar of the gods. Nice and sweet. Like butter. <laughs> I know I've had six glasses already, but am I hallucinating or did a gorgeous woman in a sequin gown with a cello just show up on our balcony? You are sloshed, darling, but you're correct. Huh. gentlemen get another chance to indulge on us. All you have to do is Ladies and gentlemen, we recreate superb sculpture. Hello, superb sculptures from around this vessel. All you have to do is guess what they are and have your chance to win a superb specialty cocktail. Now, who's ready for something free and alcoholic? Oh, sir, I think you have free and alcoholic written on your business card. And what's your name? Larry. Well, Larry, let's figure it out. Okay, now, Larry, keep your eyes open. Dear, will you? Here they come. Oh, look, Larry, it's our favorite gnome away from home. Do you get it, Larry? Do you get it? Do you get it, Larry? Come on, Larry. Let's figure it out. What is it? It's the gnome on the thing. Congratulations, Larry. You bought yourself a free cocktail from the bar. Now I'm working my way back to you, dear. Ooh, with a burning love inside. What's your name, my darling? Rebecca. Rebecca. Well, Rebecca, let me ask you, dear. Do you like free booze? I never doubted it, darling. Let's give it a go! Okay, Rebecca, keep your eyes peeled. Here they come. <laughs> I mean, I hate to expose the elephant in the room, but... Let's figure it out! Now, Rebecca, do you think you know what it is? Amazing job! Somebody get this lady her indulgence! Go on, Rebecca, Charlie. You so know what that means! It's our final round! And this time you can win a cocktail, cocktail and a shot! But watch out, it's our trickiest round yet! Now who's up for the challenge? Oh, I can see you on the end, darling. You've been waiting your whole life for this moment, haven't you, sweetheart? 
Yes. What's your name and where do you come from? Erin from Florida. Erin from Florida. Well, Erin, let's figure it out! Keep your eyes peeled, Erin, darling. Here they come. Ooh, splish splash, they were taken aback. Oh, I wish she was my personal flirtation device. Come on, Erin, let's figure it, it out. Do you think you know what it is? Go on, dear, have a go. I was a bit drunk when I saw it last night, but it. I think you're a bit drunk now as well, dear. <laughs> the girl by the pool with the um. <laughs> Congratulations, you're the queen of the bar. That's it, my darling. Ladies and gentlemen. are the heart and soul of this magnificent manor. They give the flavor, they bring the ferocity. They're my sisters. I give you the house of decadence, Diva! Oh, 
our favourite divas from both stage and screen. Of course, that opening number was one from one of the biggest franchises of all time, James Bond. Do we have any Brits in the house? Yeah, yeah great. Then you'll know that they were sung by two of our homegrown divas, Adele and Dame Shirley Bassey. Now, before we go on with the show, let me introduce ourselves. My name is Sejal. Next to me here, we have Lisa Marie. <laughs> and on the end there is Laura Tebbett. Uh, we are all musical theatre actresses from London, and between us, we've been in a variety of shows, as is going to be displayed on the screens here. Wow, well, that's good. Oh, round of applause, you're easy, please. That's good. <laughs> Uh, Laura was most recently uh, in School of Rock by Andrew Woodweather. Yes, that's right. And Sejal has uh, just performed in Sunset Boulevard at the lesser known venue, the Royal Albert Hall. Yes, and uh, recently, I've just finished as well, Sejal and I were both in the smash hit musical Everybody's Talking About Jamie. And uh, yeah, we've just finished that. Yeah, and Lisa was also in Priscilla. Yes. A plethora, a plethora of posters there. A plethora of posters. Well, now you know a little bit about us, let me tell you how devolution came to be. So, Laura and I actually went to high school together and we've been best friends for 21 years. Well, we don't look old enough. I know, you do not. <laughs> uh, Laura and Lisa met whilst working on a ship 10 years ago and when I wanted to start a, a diva vocal trio, I approached Laura and she was like, I know exactly the gal for the job. Um, and now, the three of us have been singing uh, as Devolution for eight years. Now, um, you know a little bit about us. Let's get on with the show, shall we? So, we just brought you two um, iconic divas from Great Britain, but we're going to take you across the pond now and give you two iconic divas from the USA. Anyone in from the States? <laughs> All right. We're well, outnumbered. in a moment, uh, we're going to do our own version of our favourite Cher song. Any Cher fans? <laughs> yes, she's wonderful. But before we do, uh, we, we have a diva that we love as a collective and that has inspired all three of us. Um, she was a wonderful, iconic uh, diva that just brought the soul to all the way around the world. In fact, they called her the Queen of Soul, the late, great Aretha Franklin. <laughs>
love for the great soul divas as well as the musical theatre leading ladies that brought us together as devolution. Um, we've not been able to do this for a while um, and there really is nothing better than traveling the world and singing with your best friends. We are very lucky. That being said, 
We are all leading ladies in our own right, and we have our own individual careers, styles, and musical inspirations. Um, so in this next section, we're going to tell you a little bit more about ourselves, and to kick you off is the powerhouse, Lisa Marie Holmes. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so, as Sejal just said, uh, we all have our own inspirations, um, various different ones, and especially uh, the, the great divas that inspired us, but they're all so different. And my biggest inspiration would probably be sitting and watching the great MGM and Universal movie musicals starring Judy Garland and Rosemary Clooney and Grace Kelly to name a few and then on the tail end of that my personal favourite diva the fantastic Barbara Streisand Any Streisand Streisand fans? Oh yes, fantastic, well that's good and, um, and actually uh, this is still probably my most favourite job to date, but when I was just 23 years old, I was cast in a musical review called You Don't Bring Me Flowers, where I got to portray the role of Barbara Streisand um, around the UK. And it was wonderful getting to sing her songbook every single night. Then 10 years later, I was invited back um, to do a one-woman show called The Streisand Version, which I performed in the heart of London. And recently I got to do it again just after the pandemic ended in London again and it was it was wonderful to come back to it. So she has followed me all through my career so I would love to perform the finale of that one woman show if I may for all of you. And um, thank you. <laughs> and um, I have to say um, I'm, I'm going to do a little nod to Streisand but I won't do a full impression <laughs> of her tonight. Um, this particular arrangement was arranged especially for Barbara Streisand by Sir Stephen Sondheim, the late great. And those, um, those Streisand fans will definitely have a little giggle at the lyrics that he replaced for her. But it's a collection of Streisand Broadway classics. <laughs>
myself, my sister, my brother, and my grandma were all in the local amateur operatic society. In fact, my dad was late for my birth because he was playing the role of Friedrich in the Pirates of Penzance. That's the kind of commitment we have in my family. Uh, so, when I graduated from drama school, my first job was one of the most famous musicals in the world, Les Miserables. Uh, now, I was lucky enough to be in the 25th anniversary tour of that that went around the UK, then went to Paris, then to the Barbican, where it started in 1985, and then finished at the O2 Arena, starring people like Michael Ball, Alfie Bow, uh, Samantha Barks, Matt Lucas, to name a few. This show is also very important to me because my brother, who is also an actor, his first job out of uh, drama school was also Les Miserables, uh, but in the West End, so my family have seen it a number of times. Uh, I was lucky enough to perform the role of Fontaine, uh, so it's a pleasure for me to revisit her song for you tonight.
Delta. Now, unlike Laura and Lisa, I didn't grow up watching musicals, um, and nobody in my family is musical. No one can sing, no one can play an instrument, no one acts. I don't know where I get my dramatics from. Maybe I'm adopted. Um, I didn't really discover musical theatre until much later in my teens. Um, my actual first love has always been jazz and soul music. Um, I am very lucky to work both as an actress in plays and musical theatre, but also work as a pop and soul session singer uh, and sing with concerts and sing concerts with orchestras and bands. Um, and I think my biggest music influences came from my dad, who even though he wasn't musical, was a big music lover. Growing up, he would play artists like Sam Cooke, Billie Holiday, Aretha Franklin um, on his record player. And I think those really kind of husky, weighty voices or what really spoke to me. And as I've gotten older, um, I found my own musical tastes uh, with uh, essentially with big diva voices, but also people who songwrite, like Mariah Carey, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, and Miss Amy Winehouse. Uh, Amy Winehouse, like me, uh, also grew up listening to jazz. Her influences were Sarah Vaughan and Ella Fitzgerald. And I think uh, we have a lot to thank Amy for, um, for bringing kind of jazz back to my generation. Um, she paved the way for artists like, you know, Adele and Duffy. Um, and it's a real shame that we won't get to hear any more new music from her. Um, but I'm, I, I've also been lucky enough to perform in some of the same venues that she has, like the Jazz Cafe and Roundhouse. Uh, in Camden, which she's really famous for singing in, um, as well as other venues like Ronnie Scott's and Third Land all around the world. For me, heaven is a jazz, uh, jazz bar. I love being in a jazz bar. There's nothing better than listening to, you know, a jazz trio or quartet with a uh, martini. Um, so if you'll indulge me for the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a couple of numbers from her five-time Grammy Award-winning album, Back to Black.
see, we kind of all have very different backgrounds and very different musical inspirations. However, one thing that all three of us love is a movie musical. And that brings the next section. Yes, so we'd like to continue the show um, with this next song that is not only an Oscar winning song, but it's probably one of the most famous songs in the world. Originally sung by diva Judy Garland, it's from the smash hit technical in 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz. Yes, I love The Wizard of Oz too. Of applause. <laughs> now I know that um, this particular song holds a place in Laura's heart. Yes, it does. So I have been lucky enough to play the role of Dorothy twice in my life thus far. Uh, the first time was at the age of 13 at Melton Mowbray Leisure Centre. Anybody catch that? Did anybody see that one? No? Missed it? Okay. Uh, I then played it again at the age of 25 in the 2012 production at the London Palladium. This is Over the Rainbow. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the sky gray There's a rainbow highway to be found
Um, we want to say a really big thank you to all of you to coming out to watch our first show on the Celebrity Beyond. Uh, it feels really special because actually this is the first time in four years that we've been able to do this because we were, you know, lucky enough to be doing other jobs and then the pandemic happened. Um, so it does feel really, really, really special to be back on our high seas and we're really grateful for you all coming out tonight. Uh, we also want to say a big, big, big thank you um, to Steve, uh, to Loki, uh, to Max, and to Van. And to Van. Um, thank you very much. And please, please put your hands together for the amazing Celebrity Orchestra led by Rich. Thank you guys. So, you'll be pleased to know that we have absolutely nothing to sell you tonight. And uh, no CDs, no nothing, but there is one thing we are giving away for free, ladies and gentlemen, and that is our time. We'd absolutely love to see you around the ship, so if you want to come and have a chat, let us know what you thought of the show, uh, let us know what your favourite divas are, and maybe your favourite musicals as well. Perhaps you've seen us in a musical and you want to let us know which, if you liked it. But um, we would absolutely love to chat with you all and see you around, and um, I have to say, that is good night from us. But before we go, our final number uh, is going to be one of our favourite songs from one of our favourite shows. In fact, Sejal and I saw this show together when we were 18. Uh, it is a show that keeps churning out leading ladies year after year, most notably the wickedly talented Adele Dazeem, as John Travolta calls her, Adina Menzel. Uh, this is uh, a musical that's going to be turned into two motion pictures, uh, starring modern-day divas Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. This is Defying Gravity. <laughs> Just have 